you head out onto the water with your stand-up paddleboard, it's really important you plan your paddle to help ensure you and your paddling buddies have a fun and safe sup session. Make sure you consider the following. The wind and the weather, your location, the tide or the river conditions, appropriate clothing, your personal flotation, communication and emergency, your equipment and the correct leash. In this video, I'm going to be talking about paddling on slow moving waters. By slow moving water, I mean rivers as well as tidal estuaries, places where beginners and intermediates will very likely consider paddling. Rivers and estuaries can make excellent and beautiful places to paddle, but do you know how to stay sup safe when out paddling on these types of moving waters? Do you know how fast the water is moving and what affects its speed? Do you know what impact this moving water has on your paddling and how to best plan your paddling in slow moving waters? And do you know the potential dangers of paddling in slow moving waters? Understanding moving waters and how it affects your paddling is important not only to stay safe, but also to help ensure you have a fun time when out paddling. In this basic video, I won't be talking about fast flowing white water as this is a more of a high risk type of paddling and it's recommended for more experienced paddlers only. So make sure you have the sufficient skill and training before heading out into fast flowing waters with your sup. Okay, let's start off by talking about water flow. Now rivers and estuaries can flow at different speeds and their speed is impacted by a number of factors and they can vary from day to day. A river that looked perfect yesterday might be unsuitable today, or a great river for paddling last August might be a very dangerous river to paddle in October. A key variable element is the volume of water flowing. The volume of water flowing is related to the amount of rain that has fallen over the last few hours or days, or the height and time of the tide. In general, the higher the water level, the faster the flow, however, there are times where very low water levels can result in fast flowing sections. Before you paddle, it's super important that you check the river height in the same way that it's important that you would check the tide and weather forecast. Every location is different and it is affected by recent rainfall in very different ways. Definitely talk to your local sup club, official clubs and schools in the area, find out when the river is suitable to paddle the water might not actually look as though it's moving very fast, but it can be very deceptive. And anyway, even slow moving water has its challenges and are risks you need to be aware of. So let's talk about what can impact your paddle. Now, as with any paddle, you have a couple options. You have an A to A paddle, which is paddling out and back, launching and landing at the same spot, or you have an A to B paddle, which is a one-way paddle, launching and landing at two different locations. To do an A to A paddle, you need to be confident you can paddle against the flow of water to get back where you started. It's always a good idea to start your paddle and paddle upriver against the flow at first, and that way you can enjoy the return trip much easier. Inland waterways can definitely be less affected by the wind than coastal locations, but funneling can occur, so make sure you consider the effects of the wind as well as the water flow when you're paddling your paddles, especially if you're doing an A to A paddle. If you're paddling A to B, then you can avoid paddling against wind or flow of the water by doing your research properly. Research your exit points before and know where it's safe to land and exit the water. Also be aware, many inland waterways will require you to have a river license or permit to paddle. And remember, some land alongside the riverbanks is private, so don't assume that you can launch and land there. Do your research before you go. It's well worth checking with your local authority or local paddling club to see what requirements there are to paddle on that certain river. In the UK, you can obtain a river permit really easily from a number of organizations, including WSA and the British Canoe Union. So now let's talk about the risks of when paddling on rivers and slow moving waters. It's important that you're aware of your surroundings at all times and know the area. Rivers might look like safe places to paddle and they very much can be, but there are many potential hazards which you need to consider. Obstructions. Now it's important to be aware of obstructions and obstacles in and near the water, submerged, low hanging trees, as well as man-made structures. If it's a new paddle location, ideally walk the entire route first and identify any hazards you might want to walk around. Also talk to a local SUP club or school or other local paddlers, find out as much information as you can. 
weirs, which are barriers dammed across the river. Identify if you plan to paddle with any area near weirs. Check river maps and OS maps in the UK. Please be aware of weirs that are upcoming and ideally research where you can safely exit the river to walk around the weir. This is known as portaging. Weirs might look like fun to go down on a sup, but they have many hidden dangers, such as eddies, which can easily hold you underwater. There are many different types of weirs and some types even the most experienced paddlers will avoid due to the high risks. So stay away from weirs unless you are a very experienced whitewater paddler and have the knowledge and the necessary skill and equipment to run that weir. Fishermen are also very common on rivers. Stay alert and give them plenty of space. Look out for their lines, which are often very hard to see. And if you do accidentally get caught up in their lines, definitely be polite. No doubt when you're paddling on rivers, you will encounter wildlife and sup is a great way to experience them. Be respectful, give them plenty of space. Try not to be loud. Definitely try not to disturb them. Also keep an eye out for other water users on the river as well, like boats. Keep to the right hand side of the river. Boats are likely to be traveling faster than you are, making them much less maneuverable and slower to stop. So stay out of their way. Due to their size, they may also be constrained to where they can go on the river. So give them plenty of space. And also remember, not everybody on the river knows the rules. The same as when you're paddling anywhere, it's important to consider your safety equipment. When paddling on moving water, we would recommend you wear a coiled quick release leash. A coiled leash stays on your board instead of trailing in the water behind you, therefore reducing the chances of catching it on debris. Having a quick release means that you are able to easily quickly detach yourself from your board in an event of an emergency like getting entrapped. A quick release leash works well and can ultimately help save your life, but only if you know how to use it properly. So practice and make sure you can confidently use it. Again, it's always recommended you wear a personal flotation device when paddling, whether it's for additional water confidence or in the case of an emergency, a PFD provides you with extra buoyancy to help keep you afloat. Check out our PFD video to find out about all the different PFD options in more detail. When paddling on a river and other moving waters, we recommend a standard buoyancy aid rather than an inflatable waist PFD, which requires manual activation. Like I said before, rivers and estuaries can be great places to paddle, offering fantastic paddling and wildlife viewing opportunities with your paddleboard. But it's important you always consider the flow of the water when both planning and when out on the water to ensure you have a safe and enjoyable paddle. Gain some knowledge of the area and understand how the water's flowing on that particular day. Plan your paddle, include your entry and exit point. Consider any flow you might have to paddle against. If you have to paddle against the flow, ideally do that at the start of your session, not at the end if possible. And always wear a coiled quick release leash and a buoyancy aid so you're prepared in case of an emergency. To find out more about leashes, PFDs, emergency equipment, and other safety equipment, which is important to consider before heading out onto the water, check out our other SUPSAFE videos. We hope you found this video useful and it's got you thinking about how to make sure your own paddling is as safe and as enjoyable as possible. Please share this information with other paddlers to make sure we all keep everyone SUPSAFE on the water.